guys. Dave here. Uh, I am in one of my favorite parts of campus. It's called the Don Morris Walk. It is an area full of wetlands, uh, such as this one. And I'm really hoping you guys can see some of the birds. I mean, it's, it's not packed with it, so don't worry. It's not a magic eye test, but this is two and a half minutes less than of walking around. This is actually a little shack. It's pretty unusual. Most of it's uh, just a trail. But uh, it's about as pure nature as you can get once you're off the path. At least for a little while. Anyway, just wanted to share that because I really like it out here. I'm hopefully, I never know how strong this mic is, but I'm hoping you guys can hear some of the birds and stuff in the background. There was a kookaburra earlier. I have no idea what's making that high-pitched ding noise figure that out one day. But uh, anyway, I figured might as well do the vlog here. Although I think I'm going to go take a seat. So that way I'm not walking around. I'm not bobbing all over the place. Anyway. Oh, he's a magpie. Magpie! Love magpies. Anyway. So, uh, <clears throat> actually I have an idea. Let's see if I can, nah, I can't flip the camera around. Darn. Oh, I was just going to just uh, talk while you guys enjoyed the view. I guess I could do that anyway. Sure, why not, right? Let's see. Is that a good view? Hmm, looks pretty whitewashed. Yeah, that's all right. It's good enough, right? So, uh, been an interesting week, to say the least. Uh, been buckling down a lot for economics, because I had that bad test that we talked about, I think, last time. Heh. <laughs> anyway, so about every day, every day it's been about at least an hour, some days two or three at a time, of just working on economics, and just doing problems, and studying stuff, and reviewing things, and it's nice having confidence again in something. You guys can see over there, there's uh, a couple birds. Anyway, so it's been taking up a lot of my time. Uh, rescued a heron on Sunday. Oh my goodness, you gotta talk about that. So this is about a week ago now. Uh, I was walking back from doing studying in the library. Huh, economics, who would have guessed? And uh, a bird flew out from under a staircase next to a building. It was one of those uh, like metal catwalk utility staircases. And a mother heron flew out. I think she was maybe, her head might have been hip height, give or take. You know, flew out maybe 30 feet in front of me and then landed on a ledge and just stayed there, which is kind of unusual because, you know, birds usually aren't all about the uh, whole, you know, staying by people. And she kind of flapped her wings and was making some croaking noises. And I just stood there because I thought that was cool. And then at this point, I was just about parallel with the uh, staircase because I'd walked forward and I heard a rustling. And I looked and there was this little baby fledgling heron, uh, baby thing. <laughs> it's a fledgling. I mean, gosh. Uh, it you know, had it was starting to get its flight feathers, but it was very much still covered in down. I couldn't give you how old it was. Maybe you know, a couple months, maybe one or two. I don't know how herons really grow. <laughs> anyway, and I'm like, oh, look at the baby and stuff like that. So you know, grabbed my phone, took a picture, and then it tried to walk away or like scoot away, and it like got up and kind of half fell. Something was really oh good. The sun's coming out. Hopefully, you guys can see better. Anyway, something was really wrong with its leg, and uh, as soon as I saw that, called animal control, and they're like, well. It's Sunday, we don't really have anyone out and about, and all of our people are volunteers anyway. If you got like a shirt or a towel, throw it over the baby bird so you can secure it, and then uh, bring it over to this animal hospital, and they gave me an address. And uh, I debated for a little bit, like, oh, should I, should I run back and grab a towel? Should I just take off my shirt? And then uh, one of my friends came, I'm like, came, came and I was talking to him, I'm like, you know what, screw it. So I uh, did a very masculine gesture, uh, ripped off my shirt, and then proceeded to... Uh, prance about this little baby heron for about five minutes because they had like a four inch long sharp beak man you don't you don't mess with that that can draw some serious blood but eventually i managed to throw the uh lost name throw the shirt over the little baby uh over the baby heron scooped him up took him back to the flat put him in a box someone drove me to the animal hospital dropped him off there uh, i'm gonna call him on monday and see what's up see if uh what the what the status is on the baby bird they probably got discharged him a couple days ago if they were supposed to call me but the lady there didn't really seem into her job and like tried to take away the form I was filling out before I actually finished filling it out. So I don't really trust them. But anyway, that was kind of cool. Oh, I see a check how long I'm recording for. Okay, cool. Four minutes, 30 seconds. 40 seconds. Sorry. Anyway, uh, other stuff that's been happening. Oh, so I've done some more interviews with professors. Uh, two only. One was actually kind of weird slash funny in that... <sighs> The professor I was talking to was very, very scatterbrained, 
uh, yeah, it was, was very scatterbrained, didn't really know what was going on, uh, sort in a, I'm trying to think how to describe this succinctly. Okay, well, the short version is, is that she babbled at length about stuff I didn't need to know. She got way too in-depth into the project, telling me all this, this huge, vast amount of information I didn't need to know. Uh, it wasn't really clear on what my duties would be, and when I asked for clarification directly, she kind of shrugged it off or said some more techno babble. And anytime I asked, it was the same thing over and over again. Uh, she assumed I was going to work for her instantly, like, oh, well, we'll get you in contact with this, you can start after Easter. Uh, perhaps a good way of describing it is if anyone's ever had to deal with those uh, shystery salespeople, you know, the kind where they'll, uh, you know, the, the uh, like those those marketing scams, oh, you know, you, you can earn like, you know, 60000 a week, or 60000 a year doing, you know, basically nothing, blah, 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 basically trying to make you into a, a pyramid scheme, pyramid scheme, that's it, pyramid scheme people. That's a lot what she reminded me of, and I just got a really bad vibe from it. I guess there, to take away, I got a really bad vibe from talking to this professor, uh, so I will not be pursuing that research opportunity, and instead, I think I'm going to do an interesting combination. So my one, prof uh, one professor, he teaches my Renewable Energies course, Professor Fiedler, he offered that I could help him kind of plot out and plan out this the course I'm taking now for the future. It's the first time he's teaching it, it's still a really new course in general, so... He wants to see, uh, he offered that I could basically help him improve the course, which really interests me. I love teaching, and therefore that would interest me. And then a different professor, Professor Eric Kesey, uh, offered that I would be, my research would basically be fiddling about with uh, a thermal, uh, thermal electric generator. Uh, it's kind of like a solar panel, but instead of like, you know, visible light and ultraviolet light uh, creating the electricity, it's thermal energy instead. So like heat, heat. Basically, my job would be to tinker with a thermal electric generator and make it more efficient. Uh, both of these are, you know, low effort, low commitment. I've been trying to think of that word for like two and a half days. Sorry, commitment, low commitment. And I believe Professor Fiedler is cool enough and nice enough that if I asked, hey, on my resume, could I say that this is a teaching assistant job because I would be helping teach in a way, sort of, he'd probably say yes which means that on my resume I can put both that I was a teaching assistant here and a research assistant here, uh, which, you know, would be great. Because I, I mentioned it before, I want to enjoy myself here, but I also want to make sure that I'm, you know, building building the brand that is David Winack, you know, building my resume, making sure that if an employer looks at says, oh, hey, he went to uh, the University of Newcastle for a semester, how do I know he didn't just, you know, take a vacation, relax in the sun, and regularly get wasted, more or less. So that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, next week there's a career fair, so even though I'm mostly focusing on research jobs, uh, I will be talking to employers, because you know what, maybe someone will offer me an amazing deal that's like, hey, you can work for us for like a while, and we'll provide housing, and a bunch of other stuff, or something like that, you know? Uh, <laughs> which would be crazy to say the least. Yeah, so that, that'll be next week. Uh, next week I now have an exam. I'm taking a break out here from studying. I've been studying for a while now. Uh, I'll set up to you guys. <laughs> what a thunk. Anyway, just uh, taking a break. So next week I have a test. I also have a giant project due in my book solids class. The project itself isn't difficult. It just is a little bit involved. And I'll probably be doing that. A lot of that tomorrow. Maybe some today. I'll see how I feel. It's, it's due next Thursday, so I got a bunch of time. Thank God. And the next week, very excitingly, uh, Mike comes in, and uh, that means that our giant Australian adventure starts. So he, a week from today, because he's the 26th, today's the 19th for me, and uh, he comes in at like, God, like 6.45 in the morning or something like that, so I'll be actually sleeping in Sydney the night before. Oh, I gotta get a hostel, sorry. Anyway, so he'll be uh, coming in that Saturday, so the same day on the 26th, comes up to Newcastle, he spends the night, then on the... 27th, we go. To, we take a plane from Newcastle, go up to Brisbane, spend a day in Brisbane, then we go up to a place called Hervey Base, go and tour around Fraser Island. Uh, I'm just going to let you guys type these into Google. Uh, maybe I'll put links. Anyway, uh, we go to Fraser Island, spend uh, two days, one night there, whatever. Uh, then we go over to a place called Black Down Table Land, Black Down Table Land National Park, a town called Blackwater up in Queensland. I guess it's all in Queensland, but uh, Blackwater. Spend... Uh, I guess two days slash a night there, drop back down to Rainbow Beach so we can explore Great Sandy National Park, which I'm very, very excited about because we get to spend a day there. Then we go, we drop back down to Brisbane, fly from Brisbane to Sydney, 
then Mike has to go home the next day. Uh, that is April 5th. His flight goes out at, uh, I believe, 10.15 in the morning. And, uh, well, at about 9.40 or so, my flight leaves. So I'm going from Sydney to a town called Alice Springs, smack dab in the middle of Australia. And then I spend one night there before going on a tour uh, with a bunch of other people where we'll be sleeping in tents and stuff like that for uh, three days, two nights, uh, exploring Uluru, Ayers Rock for some people. For some reason, some people know Ayers Rock. Anyway. Uh, Uluru, a place called Katajuda, which I'm very excited about because it's a little lesser known. I always like the slightly out of the way places. And then another place called King's Canyon, or I think, uh, Oritaka, Oritaka, the, for the, uh, indigenous, uh, the, sorry, Aboriginal Australian name for it. Anyway. Uh, and then come back to Al spend one more night in Alice Springs, then I fly back the 9th, and I'll be back in Newcastle, <laughs> probably late in the evening on the 9th. Which is okay. I mean, <laughs> but it's, uh, whew. I'm going to be bushed, because between Mike and I's adventure and then my adventure in the Outback, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of walking, which I'm excited about. I'm so excited about it. I love hiking. I love getting to explore nature. It's part of the reason I, it's part of the reason I brought you guys out here. But uh, it will be a lot of walking. <laughs> I'll, probably, I'll probably come back very tired. Right, I've got to flip around here to deal with my ugly mug again. Uh, sorry. Uh... 11.30, I'm sorry, about 11 and a half minutes in. Uh, other stuff that's been happening, not too crazy much otherwise. It's been a lot of just day-to-day -day stuff. A couple of people's birthdays were yesterday, uh, and we did something called a room crawl. Basically, a bunch of people who want to participate set up little games in their uh, rooms. We go room to room doing them. They're all drink games, as I'm sure you expected. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I ducked out a little bit early because I wanted to actually wake up this morning. Uh, really good decision on my part because I was the only one who woke up without a hangover. There's a fire drill this morning, so everyone was really pissed about that. Uh, I laughed though, I thought it was hilarious. Um, doo -doo. I think that's mostly it. There was a music night on Thursday, that was really cool. So all the different residences, basically, they put forth their champions. A bunch of people from the res different residence halls uh, volunteered. And it was, they were, there was actual judging, so it was like a, it was a competition. But a bunch of people did musical acts, and it was really, really cool. Uh, I fell in love with a uh, girl who had a loop pedal. Basically, she did kind of beatboxing, where she made most of the noises with her, uh, what's it, you know, most of the noises vocally or whatever, and had a loop pedal so she could get them repeating. Uh, her actual musical talent was uh, not exactly 100%, but it, I love loop pedals and really kind of wacky stuff like that. So I thought it was really, really cool. I was, I was very impressed. Also, she was cute. Anyway, uh, I think that's all I got. I'm trying to think off the top of my head real fast. Uh, I don't have a pad of paper like I usually do. Okay, I think that's all I got. Next week is spring break. I'll see if I can do, maybe Mike and I will do a vlog before we go out. That'd be kind of cool, actually. I'll run it by him. Anyway, that's all I got, though, for this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed and have liked, uh, have liked out here. It's so beautiful, especially when someone's not talking loudly like me. So, thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, as always, leave a like if you did, subscribe for more, leave a comment, stuff like that. And uh, I will see you, and potentially Mike and I will see you uh, next time.